today's video is a little different. It's a tutorial. I don't usually put these on the on this channel. I put them on my own channel, but I figured I'd throw this one on here. I purchased a new bike recently. It's called the Rad Rover from Rad Power Bikes. It's an awesome bike. Uh, it comes, or it's electric bike has four inch fat tires, but you can pedal it just like a regular mountain bike. I've been riding it to work and stuff. I have over 70 miles on it now in the last week and a half, and I really love it. But I decided I wanted to upgrade the battery because I'm gonna be using it for hunting, and I want to have the battery last as long as possible. So I'm upgrading the battery to a 52 volt, 15 amp hour battery. It comes with a 48 volt, 11.6 amp hour battery, which is more than enough for most people. Uh, it's probably honestly more than enough for me, but I wanted I wanted to be a little bit on the safe side and I want a little bit more power. So I decided I would upgrade the battery and then do a tutorial way I installed the battery. So this is my tutorial installing the battery and upgrading my Rad Rover to a 52 volt battery. I hope you enjoy it. If you're interested in, in learning more about this bike, visit radpowerbikes.com. I will have a link in the description as well. They're pretty awesome bikes. I've been researching them for uh, the last six months and uh, finally pulled the trigger on it and got me the Rad Rover and uh, I'm gonna be using it for the hunting season later on this year, later on this month actually. So anyway, pretty excited for everything. I love the bike so far, and uh, hopefully you enjoy the video, and uh, if you're watching it, you obviously are interested in upgrading the battery, so if you have any questions, post them below. Uh, you can subscribe to our family vlog, and uh, hopefully this is uh, a beneficial video for you. Thanks. Okay, this is my awesome Rad Rover bicycle. I am going to upgrade the battery today. This is not something that I recommend you do if you want to keep the warranty. Or Rad Power Bikes cannot guarantee that they will warranty anything if you do upgrade the battery. So I'm upgrading it to a 52 volt, 15 amp hour battery. And I will show you that battery here in just a second. So this is the battery I'm upgrading it to. It's currently charging right now with the included charger. The charger that came with it is a 58 8 volt 4 amp hour charger. The battery's in there, it's self-contained, it's got a little power switch there, it's got a USB port that came with it, two connections here, and then it also came with the connections that I will use on the bike to connect it to so you can take it off. And then I will heat shrink these. It doesn't feel a ton heavier than the stock battery, maybe a little heavier but not too bad. Okay so I have taken off the battery mount here. As you can see just taking off the allen bolts there. There's three of them. And then this comes off here. I'm gonna take out these four screws just to get to the inside here. And uh, see what that looks like. See if I don't have to cut that wire because if I don't have to, I'd prefer not to. I'm gonna take this and the battery and do an electric bike kit for my wife's bike and use this 48 volt battery. Okay, so you can take this off, but it's not gonna work how I wanted it because it is glued in there solid so it won't come out. I don't want to deal with that because I want to use this again so I'm going to splice it down here and put the connections on there and leave that intact so I can splice it onto the next bike. Okay so I cut the wires there give me a little bit on there it's not much but I should be able to use that to splice too. One thing to note that if you have if you just barely got this off with the battery on there and the battery was charged which it always should be you will have some charge in the capacitors or residual in the motor or the controller or the uh, LCD. So there still is gonna be a slight amount of current in there and it may spark depending on what tool you're using to cut that in half. So it'd be best to try and turn on the uh, system, turn on the uh, LCD, try and do the walk assist. You do that by holding down the down arrow on your controller, hold down the down arrow, but you wanna try and drain that current out. So Make sure you do that before you cut those. Okay, so I am using these, let's see if I can get this focused. I'm using these watertight connectors, they look like these right here. They are, they have heat shrink, or the shrink wrap on them that you can use a heat gun on to shrink them. So I'm gonna use those to connect to the battery connectors for the new battery. And then I can just heat shrink those, make them watertight so no water gets in. So that's what I'm planning on doing. It just gives you an idea of what I'm doing. Uh, and uh, maybe this will help someone else do this in the future. Okay, so one thing to notice is the lines that come with this battery that I just got, the wires are thicker gauge. I think these are probably 10 or 8 gauge wires. Let's see if it says on there. Oh, they're 12 gauge wires, just thicker shield on them. And the ones that are on here, you can see I cut that one, so I'm going to have to fix that. More like 14 to 16 gauge. 
Now, that shouldn't make a difference uh, because I'm upping the voltage, not the amps. If you're upping the amperage, you'd want thicker wires. And in the future, I may want to, but I'd have to replace the controller to handle more, more amps and the LCD. Uh, well, the LCD should be fine, but I'll, I would need to replace the controller to handle more amps. This wire is a little smaller than I would like. Uh, I like this new wire with the sh big shield on it. I like that better, the 12 gauge. I am guessing this is either 14 or 16 gauge. It's quite a bit smaller. Let's see if I can get a good comparison up here. You can see the size difference right there. So I think it should be fine. The controller will still suck the same amount of amps out and uh, the thicker wire would be nice, but it shouldn't be an issue. But for those of you that are looking at this in the future, you should be fine going with the same wires. You can take this all out and redo it. I don't know. I haven't looked in the, the controller box yet, but you can probably solder on new wires in there. But uh, using the pre-existing wire should be fine since you're upping the voltage, not the amps. So yeah, I got these crimped on there now. Um, now I should just be able to get the new battery and plug it into these connectors and I should be good to go. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, heat shrink these down with a heat gun and put some electrical tape on and I'll probably zip tie this up out of the way back here uh, because they'll be going up to the opening on the top of the battery. So, or actually, you know what? I can stick the excess inside the new battery case, but I'm gonna put some, uh, I will uh, zip tie this cable down here. I will zip tie this one there and then I'll get all the uh, heat shrink those connectors down and put some electrical tape on there just to make sure they're safe. And because I, I did cut that little, the shielding on that black wire. so. Sorry for it being blurry, but it gives you an idea of where I'm at now. And this has literally taken me 10 minutes so far to do. Really, really simple, straightforward. Okay, I got those shrink wrapped on there. They're still pretty warm. Uh, the heat gun wasn't working so good, so I had to grab a little lighter to finish. That's why it's black, but now I'll do some electrical tape on there just to hold it on better and give a better sill. Okay, use some... Uh, Electrical tape, got it all wrapped up, and uh, now I'm going to go ahead and just zip tie it right here onto the frame, just so it stays out of the way. I'm going to just put one zip tie all the way around there, just to keep it there. Okay, so I got it zip tied up. I went ahead and put one all the way around there, and then another one down there at the bottom, just to keep this out of the way and off to the side slightly, and then uh, I'll feed it into the bag probably right there. So that's all done. So it's still charging. I don't know how charged it comes from the the manufacturer but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I got my little voltage meter here I'm gonna stop it and just kind of see where it's at so let's turn this guy on DC volts will go up to 200 since there's 52 volts this is a little trickier to do with one hand still have a few more volts to go before it's fully charged so I'm gonna go ahead and let it fully charge before I put it on the bike 55.5 it's supposed to be up to 58.8 go ahead and uh, let it charge a little bit more okay so the battery is being charged by solar power right now because these two batteries right here were charged using this charge controller sorry it's upside down they charge using that charge controller from three 100 watt solar panels that I have I tried actually charged them a while ago I'm surprised they've been unplugged for a while but uh, so I'm using these batteries that were charged by solar panels to charge my new battery from Calibike for my Rad Rover so it is a solar powered bicycle basically <laughs> okay it is done you can see the, the battery on there now I uh, need to fix the wiring just a teeny bit. I just took it for a spin. It's definitely noticeable. Easy to get up to speed. More power going up the hills. I have, you can't see them, but I have some grass hills over there. And with the stock battery, it would slow down going up them. This time, it powered right up them with this battery. Pretty awesome. And you know, it's plenty powerful from the factory, but it's definitely noticeable throwing this battery on there. Pretty happy with it so far. And uh, you know, you keep it at the same speeds, 20 miles an hour is the top speed governed by the computer. You can, I mean, you can set it, you can change it to 25 miles per hour. And if you want, comment, I'll show you how to do that, but keep it at 20 miles an hour to be legal. This battery will last, you know, 50% longer, which is pretty awesome. I should be able to go, you know, 30 miles or so on battery only, which is pretty cool.